Hello, uh, I am Petra Parikova, and I am the Associate Director for our Artificial Intelligence Programs and Courses at Stanford Center for Professional Development. And I'm so excited to talk to you today about the AI Professional Program. So the Stanford AI Professional Program is basically a series of online courses uh, focused on the topic of artificial intelligence. Uh, so the topics like machine learning, reinforcement learning, the multitask and meta learning, but also natural language processing with deep learning that is getting a lot of popularity in the last few months, considering all the GPT, uh, chat GPT, GPT models and all uh, things surrounding that. So how we actually developed the curriculum, uh, we talked very closely with faculty to see uh, which subjects are actually gaining popularity, that they are actually kind of top notch in the area. And we also talked to our learners to see what they are interested in, like what are the subjects they are actually using in practice or they would like to appreciate to be able to use in practice. So we really saw a lot of um, content surrounding machine learning, supervised, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning. It was really getting a lot of traction. Uh, also the natural language processing, natural language understanding, that was also kind of on top of people's mind to really learn how to like work with the language or like understand the language, like develop translation models, all these kind of things. So we really try to find a match between what we can offer the best at Stanford, but also like what our audiences are looking for in terms of kind of their working professional life. Who is our uh, typical learner actually in the program? So if you look at the data, we see a lot of uh, software engineers and data scientists who might actually be already working in the field and like using some of these models in practice, but they really would like to kind of take peek behind the curtain to be like better equipped to develop their own models so to better debug. Um, that said, like we have such a, such a wide range of other, uh, other learners, um, working in the industry or like working also in academia interested in maybe, um, like looking to apply artificial intelligence into their field. Like maybe they are social scientists, like studying, um, studying the political uprisings, but they would like to use like artificial intelligence, machine learning principles into applying into their own field. Uh, also, we see a lot of students uh, coming. They might not have the typical uh, machine learning course as part of their university curriculum, and they would like to take this course uh, so they can actually develop uh, more knowledge about the subject. We see that learners are really joining from all around the globe. Uh, so Stanford is located in California in the United States, uh, but our learners are not just from, from California, from the US, because our program is really fully online and we really try to do our best to accommodate people from all around the globe. So we get also a lot of learners in Europe, like obviously from bigger countries like the UK and Germany, but also smaller ones like Switzerland. We also get people in Asia. Uh, we get people from South America, Africa, wherever you are coming from, uh, we try to like accommodate also uh, your time zone as much as we can. And also it's likely that you won't be alone, like in your own time zone. So if you are joining us from the other side of the globe, uh, we, we, we would love to see you in the program also. So our AI professional courses run as so-called cohorts, uh, meaning that you are joining um, a group of learners and studying the subject at around the same schedule, meaning that you have the same deadlines, that you are starting the course at the same time. It doesn't mean that you need to work with the other people at the same time, like you can work on the assignments and on the lecture videos based on your own schedule. Uh, but we see that there is a lot of opportunity to connect also with your classmates. Um, we see people who are uh, building uh, study groups, uh, who are joining uh, office hours together with their course facilitators. We see that some people get really connected, work on a project together if it is a class with a project. That said, like, we understand that some people just like, like working alone. They don't want to be really distracted by others. So if that's your type of learning experience you wish for is also an option, obviously. Um, the only goal is basically to pass the course if that's your goal also. <laughs> 
So when you join our courses, uh, you will be joining a group of, let's say, 120 to 100, 150 learners. And we know that it's a big number, right? And especially in a technical subject and deeply advanced technical subject of artificial intelligence, you might need support. Like you might have some questions. Um, so we basically split this group uh into a um, few, and we try to um, connect you with a course facilitator in the ratio of like, let's say one course facilitator per 25 students. So that course facilitator really is able to take the time to uh, to join a one-on-one -on -one session with you. If you have questions over email or over Slack that he or she, they are able to like jump and help you with that because that would obviously be not as possible with like such a large group of students. So we always have few course facilitators as part of the courses who are subject matter experts uh, who took the original artificial intelligence graduate course. So they know the rigor of the course. They know the subject very well. And they also very often work in the industry. So they are also bringing in the industry knowledge. So you will be connected to these uh, subject matter experts, basically teaching assistants, if you will, uh, which is one of the resources that might be helpful in case you would like to get some support with subject matter questions. Um, and the other advantages or like very useful tool we have is a Slack community. So at the beginning of the course, we invite everybody over to Slack. Um, if you don't wish to join, obviously nobody will force you, but we hope that you will join us in Slack. And the Slack is organized uh, based on the assignments and based on the lectures. And you have a chance to ask your questions live. And in addition to having kind of the direct connection to course facilitator, the Slack community is including like all the other learners and all the other course facilitators. So just from kind of the game of numbers, you can see that the probability of getting a faster response is probably much higher. And our Slack communities are very lively, often very lively. Uh, students asking questions, getting responses from their classmates, getting responses from the course facilitators. So you're usually able to kind of um, come up with the solutions debug, like all these kind of things much faster. Uh, that said, right, like ultimately it's your responsibility to working on the assignment. So like, I must say, you don't expect that they will provide you with the solutions, but like it will be more kind of a pointers to navigate you towards, uh, towards like actually finding the solution on your own. Our courses are based on um, graduate lecture materials. So we are actually not trying to make them easy. We are trying to make them more manageable for people who are working. Uh, so the time commitment is still kind of high, but like people who stay in the course, they are still able to kind of manage their work life, family life. But given the rigor and depth and breadth of the subject, we we must ask for some prerequisites that you come with. So we expect that you have a solid knowledge of Python programming language. We also see people who have different coding experience. We do recommend that you familiarize yourself with Python before you join the course and that you know it very well because all the assignments, all the coding assignments will be in Python. And the class honestly goes by very quickly. So there will likely not be like too much time to kind of start from scratch and learn Python from scratch. The other kind of two elements are kind of linear al algebra, probability review, and kind of math you might have learned, uh, hopefully you have learned in uh, as part of your undergraduate studies or graduate studies, or like maybe you learned it on your own because we also get a lot of people who study these subjects on their own. But we do expect that you have a solid also foundations in these subjects because some of the courses include written uh, assignments uh, that will require that you will be potentially doing some derivation, that you will be really trying to do some of the kind of foundational work be behind the AI algorithms. So you will uh, show us that you have the prerequisite uh, in the short application. Uh, don't don't be too worried. Like there is not no like a huge process of like applying and spending two hours on an application. It's really short. But what we are really looking for is for an explanation. How do you know the prerequisite? So like, what's your level of Python? Like, are you using it day to day at work? Or did you learn it a few years back and you applied it on a projects? Those are kind of uh, the types of informations we are looking for in the application. It can be a few sentences, but like, please be clear. Um, and, you know, the application should be fairly quick.
Once you're accepted uh, and you join one of our courses, um, you will receive uh, an invitation to our orientation session approximately, I would say, 9 to 14 days before the class starts. Uh, so should the class start on January 1st, probably two weeks before you will get an invitation to orientation which is a Zoom session with one of our program managers who will kind of walk you over the details. You will also receive the syllabus where you will be able to see the assignment deadlines. You will be able to see some of the useful information about how the course will run. Uh, and you're always able to ask us any questions. We have a course team email where you are able to reach out to us. You can also ask during the orientation. Uh, that should hopefully help you with kind of Getting set up um, on Friday before the course starts, uh, you will be receiving a Slack invite. So you're all already able to join our Slack workspace. Should the class have a GitHub account, which will more likely be true than not, you will also get, receive a GitHub uh, invitation. And then our classes always start on Monday. So on Monday at around noon, you will be getting access to the course materials all the course videos advance. Uh, so technically, if you're very motivated and if you got the time, you can really get ahead and like start watching the lectures like kind of day by day. We absolutely understand that this might not be possible for everybody, but we just want to give you the chance to kind of jump back and forth based on what you need. And uh, you will start working on the assignments. So our courses standardly have, I would say, three to six assignments. Uh, some of them sometimes have parts like assign problem set one Britain and problem set one uh, coding. But I would say that's the average of the assignments. And we try to schedule the deadlines uh, to maximize the number of weekends you have to work on them. So we absolutely understand that like during the week, you might not have as much time. Maybe you do, <laughs> but maybe you don't. So we try to like put the deadlines on Sundays. We also have a late policy available, which is a big advantage in comparison to the graduate lectures because you know, there, as, as you can probably expect, the deadlines are stricter. You have less time to work on the assignments. There are probably also less hints, less flexibility to work on them. And once you submit, uh, if you are working on a coding assignment, we have developed auto graders, which is, again, a huge advantage, uh, we believe, in comparison to the graduate course, because you're really able to get a co very constant feedback about what might be happening um, and what might be wrong. Um, so you can kind of go debug and like re-upload your assignment uh, solution again. Uh, if you are working on a written assignment, once you submit, uh, you will be receiving kind of written feedback uh, within, um, like, like I would say, a few days, depending on the schedules after the deadline. So um, in terms of what makes you successful uh, and how to actually pass the course, um, we basically expect that you get 70% on the assignments. Um, so let me repeat. In order to pass our courses, you will need 70% uh, on the assignments. So our courses are pass-fail. Uh, we don't offer letter grades. So you basically either passed or didn't pass. Uh, if you passed, you will be getting a certificate. If you didn't, you will not get a certificate. And you will need 70%. So the assignments uh, have specific number of points they can give you depending on their difficulty level. Uh, and we also always advise people to strategize a little bit. We get so many high achievers who would like to get 100% on everything or like ideally 110% and we love them. But we also understand that some people might not have as much kind of flexibility at home or at work to really get to 100% on each single assignment. So there is a little bit more flexibility built in on making this happen. So at the end, once you get 70%, you will be passing. So let me share some tips that I think might be helpful if you are thinking of applying and then succeeding in the program. Uh, so before applying, we generally recommend that you kind of go back to your notes from the school about linear algebra probability and try to kind of get again ahead uh, of the subject. And also that you familiarize yourself with Python should you like know some other coding languages uh, and you might be lacking uh, that knowledge. So that really gets you um, kind of well prepared for started starting on the program. Uh, once you start, uh, we do recommend that people really utilize the, the Slack, that they really 
ask their questions. We see that many people are struggling with the same thing. So likely if you have a question, there will be 10 other, other students who will likely have the exact same question. So please go ahead and ask. We also recommend that if you are stuck, that you really try your best to debug, but like if you're really stuck, like did you really get some time with your course facilitator? We some, see some people being shy and like not wanting to reach out or like feeling that they are not really succeeding and they might go through that alone. Like don't hesitate to reach out to them. Again, they won't provide you with a solution. Don't expect them to kind of give you the solution, but they will be helping you out to find a way uh, to succeed at the end. And the kind of last or not last, but like one thing I would mention also as to, in terms of the recommendation, um, get connected. So it's really a unique opportunity to really get to know people from different industries, different job positions, different markets, different countries who are like maybe struggling with the same questions you're having at your own work or like in your own projects. And it's really valuable to, to, to make these connections. We really believe that it helps people afterwards when they have questions about like something that is happening at work. We really see some people staying connected, really like even meeting in conferences or like in projects afterwards. Or I know during pandemic, many people made connections also on personal level because it was so hard to make connections in, in real life. So we really encourage you to do that. We understand that for some people it's uncomfortable. We don't force you. You can also work on everything el alone. But if you're actually interested in getting connected, like just, just, just go for it, right? Like be a little bit uh, courageous and try to make connections with others. So what benefits you actually get from the program? So one of the things is definitely the content. So um, we really cover the rigor of top-notch algorithms that are in the world right now. We really cover machine learning um, really in a lot of rigor. We cover reinforcement learning, natural language processing with deep learning. We have new subjects like deep multitask and meta learning, which is like really making machines or like algorithms to really make decisions kind of on their own and being able to generalize all these kind of like this content perspective we believe is really bringing a lot of value uh for your own work and for your own knowledge since we are really going into depth so our courses are really not covering just uh, the surface we are really going into depth we believe that it really helps you with debugging, that it really helps you with developing your own kind of machine learning solutions or like your own models, your own artificial intelligence tools, that you are really able to become creative, that you're not really just like using the packages that are available and like being stuck with them because you, you are not sure like what else to do. Uh, so we really believe, believe it helps you with that. So that's definitely a big part of the content. Uh, that's also one of our goals to make the content available more widely. So actually, and it might be surprising for some, we offer a lot of the content for free. So you're actually able to go to YouTube and watch these lectures uh, for free on YouTube, right? But then the question is, why should you even join the program? So that's actually we think uh, the value we are bringing uh, in terms of uh, first, like being accountable, right? So we know that life comes into the play and you're not able to like finalize or like really watch the lectures like in your own schedule. So we really hope that we are bringing you the accountability of like, okay, there are some assignment deadlines I need to finalize. I really want to pass the course. So I'm really working on the assignments. The other part is the human connection or like the connection to course facilitators, the subject matter experts who are really deep into the field. And also like other professionals, other working professionals who might be struggling with the same subjects. So that's what we also think that it might be a little bit harder if you work on these uh, topics alone for free online. Uh, so we really try to also have um, assignment overview sessions. We try to like invite uh, faculty for a Q&A so you're able to ask questions. We are trying to have industry related sessions like we really try to bring a little bit more value in terms of making the connections outside of just like the online content available to you um and the third i would say that uh, you know stanford is like very renowned university and getting a certificate still from stanford school of engineering is uh, really valuable in the job market so 
We actually recently started with digital certificates that you are able to put on your LinkedIn. Uh, we do see that people are really posting it. Uh, I talked to some of our uh, learners that successfully completed the program or successfully completed the courses. They were able to like apply for new positions, like being able to really kind of showcase their work uh, with, uh, you know, like well-known university on top of their certificate. So like outside of the content, outside of the connection with, between the experts and the other kind of networking possibilities, we believe the certification and the rigor and the end product uh, is really valuable in today's market. So our artificial intelligence professional program is based on Stanford graduate level content. So actually you're able to join the actual graduate class taught at Stanford, which we believe is fairly exciting because you can join it from home with a little bit more flexibility in terms of when to work on the assignments, when to work on the lecture videos, when to watch them, that you're kind of not stuck with some specific time of schedule. But we also believe this brings a huge value of actually learning from Stanford faculty. And they are very well renowned in the area. They are very well uh, known uh, computer scientists in the field. So if we talk about names, uh, one of our leading faculty is Christopher Manning, who is uh, a huge person in the field of natural language processing. And he really worked on making the models more accurate and efficient, like really working with the models, um, you know, writing books, like very well-known person. We also have faculty like Percy Liang, who like is really really like now excited about all the like foundational uh, models and everything and also who like who has been part of the team uh, developing the alpaca model who really got a lot of attention recently we also have people like chelsea finn who might be a little bit newer faculty within stanford but at the same time she already is bringing so much like new kind of ideas and development in in uh, in robotics and really trying to think how to generalize across tasks, like how robots generalize across tasks and how do they learn on their own. We also have people, and I don't want to like, really be pointing one or the other because everybody is just like so outstanding. It's like Dorsa Sadiq. Uh, it's people like Emma Branskill. Uh, it's people like um, Yura Leskovets, uh, Christopher Potts, who is really like also in the field of natural language understanding, getting a lot of attention recently. So the faculty is really well renowned, um, and we believe those are the best people you can learn these subjects from. So what is the best course to start with? Um, so we don't have any required sequence. Uh, I must say that. So if you already know that there is one course you're the most interested in, you're able to jump right in after you're approved. But if you're kind of unsure, um, you're not sure which course to start with, or like you would like to get a little bit more overview of the subject, XCS221, Artificial Intelligence Principles and Techniques, is a good course to start with because it covers a lot of a lot of kind of the algorithms and tools. One thing I would mention is it's still a busy class. Don't expect like since it says uh, principles and like kind of it sounds more foundational that it will be simple. It won't be uh, basic. Uh, it does have a few assignments and they come kind of quite quickly. So do expect it will still be busy, uh, but it will really give you a good overview of the subject. And we also hope like it's fairly practical. So if you join uh, the AI professional program, uh, you can decide. So you can take one of the courses you might be interested in. Um, you might be just interested in getting started and getting kind of the feel from all the areas. So you might join our course XCS221 Artificial Intelligence Principles and Techniques, which is a great course to start with. And uh, that might be it. And like, if you do pass this course, you will get a course certificate. You will get a digital badge. You will be able to show your employer, especially if they are reimbursing you, that you actually succeeded in this course. Uh, but also, you don't need to join just one class. You can kind of decide how many you would like to take. If you complete three courses, any courses within the program, you will be getting a program certificate. And the program certificate is basically a professional certificate in artificial intelligence. Um, and it really kind of builds on the rigor you have learned throughout the program. We see that some people stop. 
that's their motivation. They would like to get a pro professional certificate, get the three courses uh, kind of in their pocket. But we also have people who just continue and they are on their sixth, seventh course. Uh, and they, they just like love taking the courses like one by one. And some of them are actually interested in coming back and starting again. So I would say it really depends on your uh, motivation and you know, like what you would like to do. So you're always welcome to join one class. There is no disadvantage of that. You can also join three classes. If you pass, you will get a professional certificate, but you can also keep going if, if that's what you want to do. So our courses cost $1,750 per course uh, if you take just one course. If you take the whole program, you will be paying three times uh, $1,750. If you're unsure about kind of the schedule and the rigor of the program and like kind of assignment deadlines and all these kind of things, we always try to make the content also available for free, uh, especially if you're coming maybe from a little bit uh, less privileged background that you can't afford like 1750 for a course. We totally understand that you might want to learn this on your own. So if you go to YouTube, uh, Stanford Online YouTube, uh, we offer, I would say majority of the courses in the AI professional program over there. So like just find a class uh, name, you will be able to get the content. And also uh, our Stanford faculty, they're just wonderful in making the content also available on their uh, graduate course pages. So if you kind of Google around uh, the Stanford graduate class, you will often be able to find some of the slides, probably access to the assignment. So technically you can also work on all of these uh, kind of on your own. So what benefits people actually see after completing the course? So one of them is definitely like dealing, really being much more in depth of the subject, like really understanding the algorithms much more in depth and really understanding what is happening kind of behind the curtain of many of them. Uh, definitely they bring hopefully more connections, like more kind of understanding uh, of the field. Um, but also in terms of kind of the practicalities or like what kind of takeaways or like what it helps them with is we see people transitioning their careers. So they might be engineers working in some specific industry, never working with any of the AI models, and they start implementing it, and they see actually that this, this is the interest they might be wanting to dive deeper into. So they are transitioning their career. We also see people getting more and more well involved in their own job, in their own con kind of position in more AI projects, and getting like promoted thanks to that, or like getting kind of more job opportunities within their organization just because they learn more about a subject. In terms of uh, kind of our audiences who are more interested in like research, and it doesn't mean that they are just like professors or students, we do have a course that includes a project work, like open-ended project work in the area of natural language understanding, where people are really able to work on the open-ended task. And we see that uh, some people continue working on it after the class ends, and they are able to publish. They are like put it on archive or like they publish it to some conferences like focused on the area of NLP and NLU. Um, we also saw some people presenting at some conferences. So we usually tell people they can take from the course what they want. So some people kind of do the bare minimum to pass. They do 70%, uh, they get the certificate, they put it on their LinkedIn uh, and they're happy. We see some people really like being high achieving, really wanting 100% really wanting to publish paper, like really making connections and really building their networks and like the content expertise much more. So that's also one of the benefits we think of the program that since it's fully online and it's kind of, even though it's a cohort, it's like highly individualized in this case, like you can kind of decide on your own, uh, like how you would like to approach it. <laughs> 